Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As a disclaimer, everything that I say is my opinions alone. I do not speak for the brand or company. So this is actually my second time trying to film this. The first time, um, without even adding the clips that I wanted to add, was like over an hour. So I may have to break this video up to two parts. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this list, and I think it's going to be the ones that I rank, like, absolutely out there. Like, I can't believe that even happened to me. Um, I mean, most of the celebrities that, like, I've seen have also been, like, absolutely amazing. But I think I'm just going to do my top ones uh, for this video, and then the rest I'm just going to do for another video. So I'm looking at my list because I did make a list of all the celebrities that I have met and um, seen. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's really, really long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my like one that literally I never thought in a million years would happen, and that was seeing Baby Spice. Yes, the freaking Baby Spice from Spice Girls. Like, oh my gosh, Emma. Like, ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, sorry. Focusing, focusing. I'm just still can't believe it. Um, so it actually happened during the Christmas Day Parade filming. Uh, we actually went like me and my husband went there to go for the, the filming. It was one of the last days that they were filming in Magic Kingdom. And I'll actually insert a picture of how close we were and maybe some couple of scenes that I did get to take right now. now. So as you guys saw, we're really, really close. Uh, so next thing I knew, I saw Baby Spice, like Baby Spice just came out of nowhere. And mind you, me and my husband went into this not knowing who's gonna be there. There was a list of like who was supposed to be there and who wasn't, but I just didn't look at it because one, I forgot, <laughs> two, I didn't know there was a list until afterwards. Um, so I, that was just absolutely amazing to see, especially because I was a huge Spice Girl fan when I was really, really young, thanks to my aunt, because we're so close in age. So she was like pretty much a teenager when like Spice Girls were like huge, huge things. So she had like the Spice Girl movies that I would watch. She literally played them all the time. So that's how I became a really big Spice Girl friends at like probably the age of like two to three. So just seeing her, like I was literally fangirling out and my husband was just like, calm down. I'm like, this is my 90s dream. Don't tell me to calm down. Um, but yeah, she was absolutely amazing. She was co-hosting with um, Madison, or not Madison, Matthew Morrison. Um, he was the teacher on Glee. I wasn't a huge fan of Glee. Um, please don't come at me, <laughs> Glee fans. But that was really cool seeing him. He was so sweet too. He interacted a lot with the crowd and the fans. Um, he was there, both of them actually were there with their family. So we did get to see their kids and their spouses. And it was just so, so cute. Um, especially because at one point they did have to film with the whole family. And <laughs> Matthew's kid, was playing with a bubble wand and he was absolutely adorable and then when they had a film they said he couldn't have his bubble wand and they had to kind of like trick for like basically like when you're a parent you know like how sometimes you have to take away the toy without them noticing so imagine doing that in front of a huge scale of audience and all of us are just like this is not gonna end well this is not gonna end well that kid's gonna freak out like all of us were freaking out for this kid and I mean he just was absolutely amazing he started playing with him so that way he wouldn't notice when the mom took his bubble blower away and yeah I don't know that was just like one of the most adorable moments ever so sticking with the 90s theme um I actually got to see <laughs> Joey Fatone and Chris Kirkpatrick if you guys don't know who they are like Mm, we need to talk, okay? They are two members from the NSYNC group and I also loved NSYNC so bad, guys. Like, I literally had their backpack when I was younger. I had all their CDs. I had a Justin Timberlake <laughs> Barbie doll that was from the Bye Bye Bye. Um, I literally had a VHS that was like backstage with like, um, literally NSYNC and Britney Spears, like, and it was for NSYNC's, like, Bye 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 video, and also, um, uh, what was it, for Britney Spears, I was like, oops, I did it again backstage, too, so I was a huge, huge fan. When I heard that they were coming for the Food and Wine Festival concert, I literally requested that day's, um, <laughs> like, I requested the last day that they were performing off, and then I remembered I had Thursdays off to do with my classes, so I took that back, and I was just, like, hoping for the best. If not, I had a couple people nearby that I was gonna switch my schedule get ready to go the day came I dragged my husband along I feel absolutely sorry for him because um, if you 
he literally thought Baby Spice was bad, this was even worse. Like this was literally my dream since I was little to go see them. So I just, um, we were pretty close too and I'll insert a couple of clips too of like, to see how bad it was guys for my husband. So I'll insert them right now. So yeah, as you guys can see, I'm, I was a huge, huge fan. It was absolutely amazing to see them perform. I went to all three of their shows that they were performing that day. Um, usually when they do have concerts in Epcot, it's usually three shows. My suggestion would be either go to the first show or the last show because, well, actually the first show is kind of busy, but it de really depends on what your schedule is. Um, the last show of the night, a lot of people don't tend to go to because they want to go see the fireworks or they want to go ride frozen before it closes so that would be my suggestion if there's somebody that you really want to see but I thought it was absolutely freaking amazing I was jamming out and then on the last performance that they had mind you it was the last night too that they were performing they brought out BB Matt oh my gosh like uh, that was another group that I was obsessed with I loved all three of them and I'll insert a um, clip right here of their song singing because a lot of people don't realize that they sing back here so long Amazing. So those were the celebrities that I got to meet while I was still in my program. I wasn't working that day. Now this next one was when I was actually working. It was probably like my third week working in Galaxy Z. And <laughs> it's one of the stories that I like to tell so often because I think it's absolutely ridiculously funny. And also like it's just so unreal. Um, so the next celebrity that I actually got to see while working was Megan Fox. So she was there, I wanna say it was two days before we had media day um, or like a day before media day for Rise of the Resistance. Media day was lasting like two days. Um, so we were like all hands on deck. Everybody was in their land positions. We were constantly being moved where we needed to go. And so it just happened that I actually just got my bump to go get my 15 minute break. Um, I was walking back and as I'm packing, like passing Doc Ondars, I see a plaid. I'm like, that's weird, okay? Usually you don't, at that point, we didn't usually see them often. Um, as Rise of the Resistance opened, you tended to see them a lot more. But at the time, it was really strange, and I was like, okay, that's weird. And then I hear a familiar voice, and I'm like, why does that voice sound so familiar? Like, I know it, I know I know this voice from somewhere. And then I look over, and <laughs> there she was, all in black with um, black glasses, black hats, black shirt, black pants, like she was trying to go incognito. And mind you, if you are working and you do see a celebrity, you cannot fangirl. Like that is the number one thing you cannot do because you will get in trouble for it. Um, you actually can get terminated for actually causing a scene. Um, so it's really hard to kind of contain yourself. So I saw her and I made eye contact and then I started walking away because I just didn't want to get in trouble. And I was just like, whoa. Um, and then after my break, I was coming back out and the way that we would come out, typically there's a couple ways to come out of your break. One of them is actually going through Millennium Falcon, not that you go through the ride, but just like the tunnel. And as we're going into the tunnel, uh, like as I'm going into the tunnel, I run into the plaid again and I see her kid and her and I'm just like, friend sense, and then walk away really quickly. And I was like, okay. 
twice in a row. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and as I'm walking to my land position, I remember it was like by the garage. Uh, I was kind of standing there and I was just like trying to compose myself because like I'm freaking out that first of all I even said bright suns like an idiot to like Megan Someone just called me and it just ended um, so like I was saying I was going right into the garage where I was supposed to be standing and um, Stormtroopers start to go by and what I used to like to do when I was in any position I would see a stormtrooper I would go to a kid close by and stay in character and just be like natural the stormtroopers are on their way like we don't want to be interrogated and I did that to the nearest kid that I found and um they were laughing and next thing I know I hear a chuckle that sounds familiar again <laughs> and I'm like oh gosh oh gosh and I look up and it's like the fox as she's recording this guys and I'm just like <gasps> oh yeah act natural stay in character <laughs> So I'm staying in character with this kid and we just start, you know, kind of messing around. The stormtroopers kind of pass her, like, you know, nothing happened. And the next thing I know, I see Chewbacca. And this is so adorably cute. She starts fangirling over Chewbacca. Like she was literally living her best life that day. Like she lit, I, I kid you not, there was a crowd of people crowding Chewbacca like they normally do. And she's in the back of this crowd trying to take a selfie with Chewbacca while he's interacting with other kids and other people. And everybody's trying to take a picture of Chewbacca. And I'm just like, guys, really? Like, my good box is right there. You have a chance. Like, that's how incognito she was that nobody noticed her. So, I, I don't know. I'm just watching celebrities, like, literally, like, have a blast at Disney. It's so much fun. Um, so, the next celebrity that I saw while working... <clears throat> sorry. Um, so I'm actually going to join these two celebrities together because it did happen on the same day. It was actually for media day for Rise of the Resistance. Um, it, I think it was like the first day of media day. First or second. No, second was the actual party. So it was probably the first day of media day. Um, I actually got stuck at Rise Guard. I think it was like three at that point when we still had rise guard positions and I literally was by the exit um, where the strollers are and at this point we're kind of blocking it off for regular guests. The media was there kind of helping them out like I said we were kind of just doing a lot of positions and kind of trying to fill stuff up and next thing I know I see people start freaking out and I'm like what's going on and I look behind me and <laughs> I see the backside of Chris Evans <laughs> and I was just like oh my gosh, that's America's ass. I Once again, I couldn't say this out loud because if not, I would get terminated in my head. I'm freaking out. I'm like, hmm. Um, but I thought it was kind of funny because before then, he had also come to Epcot about like a month or two ago. And there was rumors that he was there. And I kid you not, he came to one of the booths that I was originally working at but then I got transferred over. So like I missed my chance to meet Chris Evans and I thought it was hilarious that like a month later I got to see his backside as he was going into the Rise of the Resistance um, for the promos that was released. And that same day later on, I once again got stuck on Rise Card 3. Um, and I was there and we were, I was chatting to the same lady because at this point I was spending most of my day there. Like I kid you not, I, spent, I think I spent like probably like 75% of my shift there and as I'm there I kid you not I once again hear people freaking out and I'm like what's going on and I turn over and there's Josh Gad yep the voice of Olaf but you see I'm a huge Josh Gad fan I've actually been a huge fan of him since he starred in the Book of Mormon on Broadway so that one was hard for me to contain and I kid you not probably later on I got switched to another position it was still in the rise area not rise I was like rise guard one or two or something like that so we were in the sort of right next to where the entrance is and not by the exit and as I'm there some time has passed after I saw Josh Gad and I was talking to a couple of my coworkers, and next thing we know, he's exiting the ride and coming into the land itself. And he actually passed by us and actually said hello and kind of smiled and waved at us. And that was the moment my heart absolutely stopped. <laughs> like, I just couldn't even, like, you know how I said bright suns to Megan Fox? Like, I couldn't even say that. Like, that's how I just, like, ooh, yep. That's how starstruck I was. Like, I just didn't even know what to say. I didn't comprehend what was going on. 
And um, speaking of Josh Gad, my coworker has a best story ever with him. Um, as I said, he was blocking the land and he had a couple plaids with him and he was kind of looking around Galaxy's Edge. She, he actually ended up going to Millennium Falcon where she was stationed. And he literally said like, I had this baby falcon just out of nowhere. And she heard and she didn't know who he was. So she did exactly what she was supposed to do with any guests. She's like, oh really? Like I can actually show you where the baby falcon is. And she kind of gave him a little bit of history of where it was some of the hidden stuff on the Falcon because there is some amazing hidden features on the Falcon. If you ever get a chance, ask any cast members nearby, they can definitely point you to that. Um, but yeah, so she literally interacted with Josh Gad for like five to 10 minutes with not knowing who he was and everyone was freaking out except for her and she's just like, it's just another day for me. So I thought that was funny. So as we were talking about Millennium Falcon, it actually made me think of um, two encounters from the Star Wars universe that I had. Mind you, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You guys can tell by my makeup. I'm actually doing another video um, that involves some Star Wars looks, so I decided to kind of do the light side and the dark side to create a balance because that's what the whole Jedi was supposed to be. It wasn't just the good side, it was supposed to be a balance. But anyway, let's stop talking about my nerdy Star Wars facts. Um, so I actually got to meet George Lucas while I was working. This was actually one of the days that we had rides already operating. It was running. Um, <laughs> I'll get to this another story about me working at Rise. But <laughs> yeah, um, I was actually walking backstage to get to our locations of Rise just because it's a lot quicker, especially um, during this time that we really needed to get into a routine with Rise. So we didn't really like to walk on stage just because it was a lot faster to walk backstage. And as I'm walking backstage, I see the one and only George freaking Lucas. And my brain couldn't comprehend what was going on. I was like, is that who I think it is? The man that has literally made my childhood? The man that has made me a nerd? Like, oh my freaking goodness! And mind you, I couldn't stop to like just think about what was going on because I had to be on stage because I needed to buff somebody out and that is a big thing, especially if you're going to somebody's bump out, you want to be on time. So I literally got off stage, on stage, and I was literally like just in the days. Like I'm like, it, the, hmm, did that, hmm, did, what, what? And as I got to my cast member who, you know, needed to be bump out, I was just like, FYI, um, you may have your day made if you run quick backstage, but I said this very, very quietly because we don't want to make a big scene. Um, and I think she got a hint because there was rumors that he was there, but none of us saw him. Like there was no real confirmation. So I know she walked probably ran backstage. I don't know if she ever did get to see him, but like I said, you knew what was happening to be like a very, very quiet profile. Um, so that was the first encounter of any actual Star Wars characters, characters that I met. Um, the next one, I'm gonna butcher the name and I'm sorry, but his name was uh, Warwick J Davis. Uh, Davis, yeah, Davis. So some of you actually may know him as actually being the Ewok. Um, he is also in Rogue One Solo and he does voiceovers for Rebels. He is also three different characters on the Harry Potter series and he has gone to the Harry Potter meet and greets at Universal. Um, but it was just absolutely so fun to see him because I was actually walking backstage to clock out because it was my time to be bumped out. And I was walking with uh, my other coworker because we were both having the same bump out. And as we're walking, I look over on my left side to the sea flat and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, and then I look down and I see him and he is wearing an Ewok ears. And I thought it was absolutely adorable. He was there with his wife and his daughter. I know he has a son, but he wasn't there that day. I don't know what happened or if he was somewhere else. But they saw us and they kind of looked over and smiled and we smiled back and said, right son, so, you know, have a good day. And I was freaking out when we got backstage and my co-worker was like, why are you freaking out? What was going on? And I'm like, do you know who we just saw and just talked to? And she was like, no. And I kind of explained who he was in this whole Star Wars franchise and why he's sort of a big deal. And she was like, and he was wearing Ewok ears. I was like, exactly. He was wearing Ewok ears. Like I just, and that's always so much fun when you meet celebrities who have played different characters and they're actually wearing the characters that they're playing. I don't know. It's just absolutely sweet. Actually, speaking of characters that are wearing characters, um, I actually met Jody Benson while working at Rise of the Resistance. 
if you don't know who she is, she's the voice of Ariel. She is absolutely the most sweetest person I think I've ever met in my life. Um, so there was an issue going on with some boarding groups because I guess she didn't realize that she needed to have a boarding group or she did have a boarding group and it wasn't showing up. So we had to take her to guest relations, which was actually nearby where I was working and stationed at. And I was actually talking to her kids and I didn't realize it was her kids. Uh, they were really, really nice, sweet too. We were talking about their day, sort of what, what they're doing, uh, if they had any idea what the ride was. They said they didn't. And I can get like a sort of breakdown without giving it away. And I was like, yeah. So I kind of explained it without actually giving a lot of the main spoilers away. And next thing I know, I feel Jody Vance's hands on my shoulder. And she literally comes up to me and says, Thank you so much for talking to them. Uh, thank you so much for also trying to get this resolved. That is absolutely amazing for you guys to just be really, really, really good at this. And she told me to have a great day as she just taps my shoulder, walks into it. I was freaking out so much because I love her. Like, I absolutely love, love, love Ariel. She does just so sweet. She had the sweetest tone ever. She just had like a motherly tone. I don't know how to explain it. Um, and she was also wearing an Ariel shirt, which I just thought was absolutely adorable. But yeah, so as she left, I turned around to one of my coworkers and I looked at her and I'm just like, I'm gonna freak out and lose my job right now. Can I go backstage really quickly to compose myself? And she's like, I'll cover you, girl. Go, go backstage. Say you're gonna water and calm down. <laughs> because that was one of the moments where I truly was like, I'm gonna like pass out here and there in front of everybody. So I think those are the main real ones that I kind of got to take the backside. I mean, there's two other people that I've gotten to take the backside that I think we're gonna categorize some of the different things. Uh, but yeah, those are some of the celebrities that I got to see and meet during my job. And like I said, it's, it's kind of crazy. Enjoyed my little story time, I guess, about celebrities that I met.